Greetings. This is Dr. Paulina Van. I'm the author of Regala Healing, an evocative approach for self-care, self-understanding, and inner healing. I have the honor of hosting this show, The Poetry of Healing, and I want to welcome you from all over the world. We'd love to know where you are joining from, so please put it in the chat if you don't mind. So for today, um, or for Christians, today is Resurrection Sunday. And I just want to honor the fact that I know that um, those of you viewing may be from other faiths. Um, we had the pleasure of um, celebrating um, Siddhar with our friends. And I know this is um, the month of Ramadan, so I want to honor those of you of all faiths and of all beliefs. But I am a Christian for today is Resurrection Sunday and we're almost a month into spring. So both are for renewal and starting again. And so today's program is all about pushing the reset button um, on your thinking and on your life. So today I ask you to join me and embrace the goals for this session. And I hope to guide you to describe signs that, are, that you are ready to change your life. And we're gonna explore tips on how to renew your mind and transform your life. And we're gonna meditate on how to do this. We always begin with a centering exercise to help us to focus and collect our energy for this time together. A time for you a gift for yourself. And so this centering takes about two minutes. And so let's take a moment and settle into the space so we can be fully present. We're going to practice heart math, heart focused breathing to open our hearts. And so those of you who have been with me um, along the way are very familiar with this. But those of you who are joining for the first time today, I just want to give you a tip about how to do the simple exercise. I want to make sure you can see me. So we're going to breathe with our heart. So if you put your hand over your heart and take a breath through your nose and it, uh, imagine your heart getting bigger. And then when you breathe out through your mouth, imagine it getting smaller. And so that is um, heart-focused breathing. So I'm going to invite you to lower your gaze, close your eyes, or focus on a stationary object. Connecting with your heart by doing heart-focused breathing. So we're going to begin now. Focus your attention in the area of your heart. Imagine your breath is flowing in and out of your heart or chest area, breathing in a little slower and deeper than usual. So again, you're gonna breathe in through your nose and imagine that beautiful heart of yours getting bigger and then breathe out through your mouth. Imagine it getting smaller. And we wanna do this slowly. So you might wanna count um, up to five as you're breathing in and then breathing out. Um, if you can't hold your breath that long, you may do it four seconds. If you feel you can hold it longer, you can do it six or seven seconds. So let's just take one more deep breath in. One, two, three, four, five. That big heart of yours, and then out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, five. Keeping your eyes closed or lowered, I'd ask you to take a deep breath to notice that you are here. Take one deep breath to notice how your body feels. Now take one deep breath to enter this session. For those of you who are joining us just after we've completed this centering, I am Dr. Paulina Van, the author of Regala Healing, an evocative approach for self-care, self-understanding, and inner healing. And I host this show, The Poetry of Healing. Well, the title of our uh, 
topic today, what we're going to put our arms around, I hope, um, is pushing the reset button on your life. And so, so that we're using the same language, I want to give you some other labels that you may hear me use or you may read about after this that represent or describe res reset. So they are renew, recharge, refresh, revive, reboot, rebuild, regenerate, replenish, start fresh, become new, begin again, redefine self. So as an introduction to lay your personal foundation for this presentation, I invite you to reflect on the following questions when you look at your life. Is it time for a change? Is it time to have a different look or outlook? Is it time to let go of the past and embrace a new way of being in the world? There are moments in our life when we know we need to drastically shift the course of our lives and that it will allow us to grow, evolve, and live a life we love and, are truly, and will truly be happy. Wanting to reset doesn't mean that you have failed. It simply means you're ready to focus on what matters, and that is you. So what are the, some of the signs that you're ready to change your life? I'm going to share with you and illuminate some signs that perhaps you may not have considered. I reflected on the writings of Surf Walls, a transformational coach, to focus my thinking about the ones I'd share with you today. So the first one is life changes. When you're experiencing a life challenge, and you know life happens, such as in your relationship, health, career, or finances, it's usually an indication that a reset is necessary. And you can view this as an opportunity. I want to say that again, as an opportunity for you to learn more about yourself. The next one is, I call it desired joy. You've been experiencing a lack of unhappiness, or you've been being experiencing lack and then unhappiness, frustration, disappointment. You've been impatient and negative. You're ready to rewrite, rewrite your life story and make it one of joy and peace, abundance, fulfillment, and balance. And you're willing to do what it takes to create a life you love because you know you are deserving of that. The third one, to give you a sign that it's kind of time to reset your life, is inner voice promptings. And we talked about that um, last month. You, you know, you thought your life was great. And then you begin to feel an internal prompting, a desire, urge to do more. It may be your soul, your true essence, calling you to be have and do more. Lastly, stress. Stress is probably one of the most common signs that you're in need of a change. Being stressed can make resetting your life difficult. Change itself can cause anxiety. Being stressed may compound that anxiety. So how do you reset um, your life? How do you, you know, use that reset button? So, you know, having the right mindset is the key. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about your mind. Um, you've heard that the mind is a beautiful thing. One of my favorite quotes is uh, a thought by um, Gandhi who says, thoughts become your destiny. So an important characteristic of the mind is mindset. 
Mindset is a collection of attitudes and thoughts that shape and influence how you think, how you feel, how you act in any given situation. Your mindset shapes your ideas about yourselves and others and how you cope with life challenges. In addition, your mindset plays a significant role in determining achievement and success. Therefore, it is important to understand the type of mindset you have and to control it. So, are you optimistic or pessimistic? Do you nurture a fixed or growth mindset? You know, if your mindset is fixed, you tend to believe you cannot change, and the opposite is true about a growth mindset. I'd like to share with you a couple of examples of fixed versus a growth mindset. I just have two examples for you. So the first one is a fixed mindset would think, that's just who I am. I can't change it. Someone with a growth mindset in the same thought would say, would think, I'm constantly evolving. I'm a work in progress. Do you feel the difference in that? The second example is if I don't try, then I won't fail. That's a fixed mindset. The growth mindset thinks I only fail when I stop trying. Okay. So I'd like to offer you three tips on how to renew your mind and transform that beautiful life of yours. The first one is accept yourself as you are. Self-acceptance is a major key to controlling your mindset. This is because it determines how you think about yourself. If you accept yourself and are proud of who you are, you have a better chance of having a positive image and a higher self-esteem. Now, it's not easy to practice self-acceptance because in a world in which we are surrounded by social expectations and media images that may differ from who we are in the world. And that's the reality. If you do not accept yourself, you may develop a fixed, pessimistic mindset. Accepting yourself will make it easier to appreciate yourself. Appreciation includes loving yourself and treating yourself in a special way as you would a best friend, despite the mistakes you've made or the shortcomings you see in yourself. Practice self-love and self-compassion. For example, protecting me time. Think about what you can do to treat yourself with love and compassion you are special and precious. So, you know, I always give my examples. Um, and so my me time might be taking a longer shower, okay? I may have to eliminate that one since a drought is anticipated in the area that we live. Also, I'm more deliberate about monitoring my commitments and will say no if my plate is already full. I even turn down opportunities for things I really enjoy doing, yet do not have the time because the activity might easily replace my me time. If I overcommit, I renegotiate due dates and I'm usually successful. So here's the second tip. Change the channel. That's what I'm calling it. So another activity that is required in controlling your mindset is managing the thoughts which run through your mind. Whenever you find yourself thinking something negative, replace that thought with a positive one. Another effective approach is to change the activity you are doing so as to create a new train of thought. 
If you've been working, job, or a personal project and become fatigued or frustrated, take a five to 10, maybe 15 minute um, break or change your location. And let me give you my example. For years early in my career, I would work long stretches of time and not take breaks. My thought pattern was I had too much to do to take breaks. And years ago, I learned from exploring the research that taking regular short breaks made me more productive, focused, creative. Whether working at home, at the office, or even teaching a class, I set my alarm to take a break every 45 minutes. For example, if I'm home, I'll step outside and take some deep breaths of fresh air, like I did this morning just before um, uh, logging on to the show. I took a five minute walk um, to kind of cool, 45 degrees, but it just felt good to be out in the fresh air. The other thing I might do and, and, and have done is during that break, I'll call a friend or family member to talk about something interesting or uplifting for a few minutes. And then I return to my task and um, with a renewed mindset for the next 45 minutes. The last tip is I call it conquer and minimize worry. You know, do something, you know, that makes you excited. I want you to engage in something that makes you excited, even if it's unconventional. Are there things which you always wanted to experience but did not due to your culture, family values, public or professional image, your age, someone else's dislikes, or even your own fears? This have, you know, may created a fixed mindset in you. You can transform your mindset into a growth mindset by breaking the unwritten rules as long as it's not hurtful to yourself or others. Give yourself a chance to experience the joy of your personal desires and preferences. And as if you are worried about taking that leap, ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? I'll tell you, in most cases, the joy of being um, the joy of being you will definitely outweigh the consequences. So I have to share my examples. Make it real. You can think of your own, because um, mine are not really out there, but they're out there for me. Um, and if you'd like, share it in the chat. One year, I made a resolution to do something I've never done before at least twice a month. I started attending Sip and Paint. I didn't believe I could paint. I recall in my childhood, um, my best friend would do my stick figure drawings during our class. I just couldn't do it. Taking painting classes, I did well. And after one success, I attended classes on and off for two years. Another example is I went swimming with the dolphins on vacation. An incredible experience to be with those beautiful creatures. That experience was a major sense of accomplishment and joy and a big deal for me because as a teen in New York, I was almost swept out into the ocean while swimming at uh, Coney Island. And so how do we recharge our mind? How are we gonna do that this morning? I'm gonna use an analogy. So anytime we have a piece of technology like our phone or computer, and it's giving us problems, what's the first thing we do? Well, we turn it off and then turn it back on. So mindfulness teaches us that the same idea can apply to our minds as well. Unplug our mind even just for a minute and watch how many issues have disappeared 
when we plug back in. I invite you as I lead you through a meditation to recharge your mind. And it's about three minutes, okay? So there are five steps and I'll lead you through each. So the first step to unplugging your mind is stop everything you're doing, okay? This begins with stopping your body and giving yourself permission to do nothing for at least a minute or so. You might try saying to yourself, just for this one minute, I don't have to accomplish or change anything. Next, now imagine that each of your five senses is like a door that lets information into your mind. Close each of these doors and offer yourself the gift of quiet. Your mind takes in so many sights, sounds all day long. For just a minute or so, let it rest. Close your eyes or lower your gaze. Turn off anything you're listening to. Stop distracting yourself in any way. Then see if you can quiet your thoughts by telling your mind, you can rest now. Nowhere to go and nothing to do. And if thoughts come into your mind as we're doing this, just acknowledge them and repeat. You can rest now, nowhere to go, nothing to do. Now that you've stopped and quieted your senses, come home to yourself in the present moment. Pay attention to your breathing and the sensations in your body. Without trying to do or change anything, say to yourself, the present moment is my true home and I have arrived. We're about halfway through now. And I ask you to see if you can direct love and compassion towards yourself in this moment. Having and letting go of all busyness, say to yourself, may I be well, may I be safe, May I be loved. Let's say it again. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be loved. Finally, you recognize that everything you need to be happy is already in this present moment. You are alive and the gift of life oh, is infinitely precious. You can feel that your mind is completely at rest. Now you can return to whatever you're doing um, in the session, but I invite you to keep your eyes closed um, if you'd like um, and see how different it is, how different it feels after you have unplugged for just a little while. I'm gonna move to closing now. Mindset is very important because it affects the way we view our surroundings and ourselves. If you have a negative one, everything around you will be negative as well. However, if you have a positive mindset, positivity will surround you and opportunities will come knocking at your door. The guidelines I've shared with you can help you to change your mindset to a beneficial one. Now, I found several resources um, that helped me develop my insights for this segment. I love mindful.org. I found a great site, Great Performers, and um, Huffington Post had um, some great articles. So I'll put it in the chat after the show. In about a month, um, I will present part two of Pushing the Reset Button. And I'll provide uh, specific guidance for rebooting your daily life activities. But before we end, 
I would like to read a poem from my book, Regala Healing, that describes a way I reset my life. And it's entitled, Caring for Myself. And for those of you who have the book, it's on page um, 129 um, in the physical book. And um, it's on page, one se um, page 77 um, in the ebook that's available on Amazon. So let me um, read this to you. Okay. So, caring for myself. I'm caring for myself in a new way. I'm caring for myself, and only I have a say. I'm caring for myself living in harmony. I'm caring for myself eliminating monotony. I'm caring for myself realizing my worth. I'm caring for myself cherishing my time on earth. I'm caring for myself humbled by blessings. I'm caring for myself with gratitude while progressing. I'm caring for myself garnering quiet time. I'm caring for myself and feeling miraculously divine. So I ask that you join me every first and third Sunday at 9 a.m. here, uh, Pacific time. And uh, I invite you to leave comments. I do read and respond to them. Um, if you would like and share. I really appreciate it. You may visit my site, regalahealing.com, to learn more about my healing and self-care um, work and resources. And I'd like to thank you for joining me today. And as always, I wish you love and light until I see you again.